There's a huge difference between being on a guided tour or being in a place that you know very well. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? But here's what I'm thinking. When you're on a guided tour, you kind of just become passive. You sit back and the tour guide tells you what's around you. The tour guide takes you where they want you to go. The tour guide is in charge. You're kind of just a passenger. However, when you are in a place that you know really well, you're a participant. When I go back to Moose Jaw, my brother and sister and mom and everyone all sits around. And we tell stories about things that happened around my mom's house because we know the area well. And everyone has a story because they've been part of it for so long. Up until this point, 1 Samuel, in our Bible studies on Sunday morning, has seemed a little bit like a touring situation. I have some information that I'm sharing, and a few of you have some information to contribute as well, but it's kind of unfamiliar territory. That all changes this Sunday morning. This Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to be studying 1 Samuel chapters 16 and 17, the end of 16 and the, all of 17, and you might know that chapter 17 is the story of David and Goliath. David and Goliath is a story that you know very well. It's a story we tell to little kids. It's a story you've heard hundreds of times, and it is a story that has hundreds of lessons in it. Uh, I've often said I think I could preach the story of David, Goliath, David and Goliath for six months and not run out of themes and ideas. And so here's what I want to happen on Sunday. I want you to come. I don't want to be the tour guide. I want us to be a family sharing our family stories around the story of David and Goliath. What have you learned from it? What do you see that's new in there that you've never seen before? What do you like the best about it? What lessons challenge you? Uh, what about this story makes us keep telling it? That's what I want to talk about on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. 1 Samuel 16 and 17, David and Goliath. Read ahead and come and share your stories. Then we're starting a brand new sermon series this week. For the last six or eight months, I've just been picking topics. I've been deciding what we're going to talk about, and I've just picked whatever I think I like or I need or maybe we need. Uh, that's okay, but my favorite way to preach is not for me to pick the topics. My favorite way to preach is to preach my way through an entire book. The reason I like doing that is because that then allows the Word of God to set the agenda and not just me. I end up having to preach whatever God decided had to be in that book, and so it makes it a little less uh, subjective on my part and a little more focused on what God wants us to hear. It makes me preach broader subjects, preach things I may not have ever talked about otherwise. Anyway, we're starting a sermon series on Philippians this week, and the sermon is entitled, Finding the Life You've Always Wanted. If you watch TV, if you go to bookstores, self-help stuff always is trying to tell you how to find your best life, live your best life, I want to suggest to you that the Apostle Paul is going to give you a formula for living your best life, the happiest, most joyful, thankful, grateful life you can have. But here's a hint. It's not going to be found in the places we think it's going to be found. It's not going to be found in the places we often look. We are going to learn something brand new about finding our best life. It comes from uh, Philippians chapter 1. So go ahead and read the first five verses. See if you can guess what I'm going to tell you. See if you can guess what Paul has been inspired to tell us. I really honestly think this is going to be a very, very practical lesson. Really, really helpful. It'll help people who have been believers forever. It'd even be a great uh, lesson to bring your friends to people who don't ever listen to the Bible. Because I think the Bible has something to say that will just apply right now. Finding the life you've always wanted is the sermon title for Sunday. We're started into the fall. It's a little cooler today. Summer is almost gone. People are back in their routines. I hope that means you're around this Sunday. And if it is, I'm looking forward to seeing you then.